So in the first use case, uh, you start from the TouchGFX designer application directly. And as you will see, we will not exit this application. It's possible not to exit it at all. So the first, uh, the startup screen of the application is this one. Uh, you have to select first the application name. Okay, so I will put STM32H7 Discovery Kit Use Case A. And then we have to select the application template. The template uh, is covering uh, almost all the, the ST uh, development kit. Uh, or uh, will be in the future, at least all the graphics uh, enabled one, so the one that has um, hardware acceleration dedicated to uh, graphics are supported. And the one we are interested in in this session is this one, the H7B Discovery Kit. Regarding the user interface template, you can uh, choose existing uh, templates or start from uh, an empty one that we will do during this session. So now we create the application. During this uh, step, uh, the content of the application template is downloaded from the internet, so you need an internet connection. And we have the start, uh, the startup screen of the application. So on the left side, you have all the available widgets that are proposed by the designer. So it starts from buttons, button with label, with icons, also flex button that are more uh, uh, customizable buttons. You can directly uh, uh, scale it to the size you want, put any image you want in it, while those ones are more fixed in terms of look and feel. You can insert some image uh, element, animated ones, customers, uh, containers, sorry, uh, some uh, progress indicator. So all uh, uh, an entire set of widgets that are already available in the tool. Then you have the screen, uh, the screen view. So this will list all the screens of your application. So in a, a, a TouchGFX application is a set of screens. Uh, we will have only one in this, uh, in this test. And in here, there are the list of uh, custom containers that you can define. Custom containers are uh, composed of uh, widgets, of basic widgets. We can, can come from here or can come from uh, uh, C++ uh, implemented uh, directly. So let's start uh, by adding a background box in the screen view. It's better. So a background box that will be uh, just a background image. So as you can see for the moment on the, the external uh, video I have, uh, you can see uh, that the board is already flashed with a, with a demo, just to show you uh, that it's done uh, live. So let's choose this orange uh, background. And we add not this one, but one with a label. So the idea of the demo is to uh, create an application with a button that once clicked will hide an image that I will add. Uh, so this button is called hide image. So on the uh, right uh, side of the designer, you can see all the attributes related to the selected element. So here I have the name of the button, its location, and uh, a set of, uh, of parameters that I can change. And then I will add an image. So the designer also uh, already includes some uh, set of images. So I can pick one in the, for example, uh, clock uh, background. This one is nice. I just need an image to hide it. So it doesn't matter as soon as it, uh, as long as it fits the screen. So this is my basic uh, layout. And I will now, uh, now add some interactions to that. So the tools also allow me to add interaction, basic ones. And if I want to uh, have more complex one, I need to uh, edit directly the C++ code. So the one I want to add are, are simple. Uh, so an interaction is based on a trigger, and uh, the, it triggers an action, and it can also trigger another interaction. So we have three interactions. The first one is when I click the button, so button is clicked. There is only one button. I want to hide the image. 
So I want to hide the widget. Uh, you see, I can also exec execute C++ code or change screen or other, uh, other predefined actions. Uh, so I want to hide the widget. The widget I want to hide is the image one. And I also want this interaction, when it's done, to be able to trigger another one. So I have to check this one. And I add another second interaction. This interaction two will be triggered by the end of the interaction one. So another interaction is done. Interaction is interaction one. And the action is to wait for one second. So one second will be 1000 milliseconds. And also, this interaction will trigger another one, which, is, which uh, will be interaction three. Here it comes. So this interaction tree is triggered uh, again by an interaction. This time it's interaction two. And the action will be to show the widget. And that's it. Oops. Show the widget. I have to choose the widget. Uh, image one. So that's it for my application. Now I can generate the code associated to this application. Generate the code means transform these images into uh, C++ code, into C tables, uh, implement all the interaction here using the TGFX framework. And I can see the progress of this generation step right here. So it's done. And the first thing I can do is to run the simulator. So if there is an embedded uh, uh, PC simulator, so this step will be fast forwarded because uh, it, may, it may be uh, longer. Here comes the simulator. So it's uh, exact screen I define when I click the image, click the button, I hide uh, the image and then it comes back. Mm -hmm. So now what I want to do is to flash it on the target. And there is a button for that. So uh, this clicking this button will trigger uh, a GCC toolchain uh, that will build uh, the C code and C++ code uh, for, the, for my target. So this is all included in the application template. Uh, so the, the application template has the information of uh, which uh, memory are available on the target, their sizes, and where to put uh, the frame buffer, where to put the images, the external images, and stuff like that. So all this is included in the application template. So this is the moment where the tool is actually flashing the board. Um, it's not well seen on the, on the log, log window, but it's used. Yes, it is seen. It uh, uses the STM uh, 32 Cube Programmer tool. So this one has to be installed uh, when using uh, the, the TouchGFX uh, designer. And now you can see on the web the video that uh, the demo is flashed. And if I click this button. It works exactly as in the as expected first, and also as in the PC simulator. So that's the end of the the demo for the first use case. Let's just have a quick look at the files that have been created. So you can see here the core the core application. So this is where all the initialization of the MCU is done, uh, and it's also uh, the the main entry port. You have here the main uh, the main .c function main .c file. Uh, the interesting other point is the driver folder, and especially this one, the BSP folder, which is the board uh, specific package uh, folder that contains the driver that are specific to this board. Uh, so all these files are specific to the discovery board. And also, here there are, there are no, okay, not all these, these components, but uh, in this list, there is the touch uh, panel uh, driver, for example, that is included. Uh, the component in fact contains all the H7 uh, dev kit uh, components. Uh, so there, we move that link uh, stage, uh, be, <laughs> be reassured. So uh, then the HL driver, this is the HL of STM, the, the ST framework. 
and uh, you can see also the ERARM, MDK ARM, and MCM32Q by DE, which are the three uh, IDEs that are supported by this application template. Note that not all application templates support the three of them. It, they will uh, at least support uh, IR. So the E1 folder will be always present. In the future, the cube ID should also be uh, always supported. And for kill, uh, it will be some of them. And uh, you can also notice here the uh, cube uh, MX project file that is also supported in this application template. And uh, in the future also, all the application templates will uh, create uh, this IOC file, will contain this IOC file. Uh, the main uh, interest of this file is to open CubeMX from it and uh, be able to uh, have all the required uh, peripherals for the TouchFX already configured. So the SDRAM, uh, the LTDC, the DMA2D, all the, the, the peripherals that are mandatory for TouchFX. And you can then edit this file and add your own peripherals. Then you can generate the code and go back to the designer to edit your graphical user interface, generate the code again, and you have your project uh, updated with both user interface and uh, MCU peripherals. Uh, so that's it for this first uh, use case. Let's go now to the second use case. Uh, 